Hey, today we are talking about newspapers, what's in them and where you can find them. So we're going to talk about all of that coming up next. Well, welcome back to another episode on Genealogy TV. If this is your first time here, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. Now, uh, the only thing I'm going to ask you here at the beginning of the show is to hit that subscribe button if you have not subscribed already so that you get notified every time I upload a video and you can stay in touch with what we're doing here at Genealogy TV. So, um, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to uh, talk about newspapers here right now. All right, so newspapers are really cool. Um, so there are so many things that you can find in newspapers, you will be amazed. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at what's in them. So one of the best resources in newspapers are obituaries. And if you've got a well-written obituary that's got a lot of information, oh my gosh, you know, it's, uh, it's Candyland Day, right? And then you've also got marriage or engagement announcements that can be found in newspapers. You can find birth announcements. You can find divorce or abandonment. A lot of people forget about this. So uh, abandonment notices were sometimes published when a woman was trying to divorce back in the day when divorce was not a, a, a happening thing. But if her husband walked off and left them, she had to file uh, uh, for abandonment in order to uh, separate from her husband. So uh, foreclosures can be found. Now, um, if you've seen any of my previous episodes, I've talked about that a little bit. Um, foreclosures notifications, you know, are tied to real estate. So, you know, that's a form of real estate. Um, community events, boy, you can find all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, business ads, business news. Um, general news, so if you want to get a feel for what was going on in the community at the time that your ancestor was living there, uh, read the papers, just flip through the pages, kind of get a sense of what was going on. Court proceedings, this could be all kinds of different types of court proceedings. Transactions, so if somebody was selling a horse or uh, was doing some sort of transaction like uh, information about um, and, you know, I didn't really list it here, but information about a will or um, something to do with somebody's estate, like estate notices. So those kind of, uh, of notices as well. And uh, marriage bonds or bans, which are also a, kind of a form of a, a marriage announcement. And so bonds and bans are not everywhere, but they were used to help notify the community of, their, uh, of a couple's intent to marry to make sure that uh, there was no impediment to the marriage. In other words, maybe the groom had been married before and didn't really properly um, divorce, or maybe he was already married and he was trying to marry again. Um, ship or train arrival and departure notices. Now, I think a lot of people forget about this one. Um, so when I was researching some of my immigrants coming from Denmark, I was able to uh, discover the ship that they were on. Then I was able to go to the newspapers in the port in which, uh, they were arriving and was able to find exactly when that ship was coming in and when the ship was leaving again. So, um, yeah, those are really helpful. Um, social columns. Oh my gosh. The social columns are the greatest because they tell all the business of the community, what was going on, who was visiting, who someone was coming down from the North to visit their sister. I mean, there was just, there's a lot of stuff in the social columns. So those are great. Um, real estate transactions. Oh my goodness. You can find all kinds of great stuff, including in some cases, the um, location of the real estate. Criminal activity. Uh, you know, no family is perfect. So uh, you, one of your ancestors may have ended up in the papers being arrested for, I don't know, drunk and disorderly conduct or something along those lines. You never know. Uh, want ads. So I found in my newspaper research, by the way, did I say I love newspaper research? It's one of my very favorite things to do. Absolutely love, love, love newspaper research. And I can't believe I haven't done this episode sooner. So want ads, you can find want ads. Um, 
for um, a variety of things. You know, people are selling eggs. I had an ancestor who was selling chicken eggs. Uh, and so, you know, he had it listed. And I mean, you just can find all kinds of stuff. Uh, school achievements. I have found where students uh, were being honored, honor rolls, that kind of stuff um, for their achievements in school. So with that, let's jump over to the websites and see a little bit about what we've got going on over there. So here we are on Ancestry. And what I did was I went to the uh, card catalog, right? You hit search, drop down to card catalog. And all I did here at Ancestry was I uh, searched newspaper periodicals and I drilled right into newspapers. And here is a list of all newspapers. Now from here, what I would do, these are really probably mostly indexes on Ancestry because you have to go to uh, newspapers.com in order to actually see the images. So we'll, we'll talk more about that here in a second. So what I would do, because I'm in the United States, I would then drill into, I don't know, whatever state I'm looking in, and I would drill in by location to see what they have, okay? And then once, whoops, I thought I hit Kentucky. All right, so now I've got these filters set on the left-hand side. And what I would do then is I would, uh, you know, start finding the ones, even, you could even go like to, era, let's say 1880s. Now we got a short list because we drilled into the 1880s. And so we've got a short list of what's available. And if you sort by record count, it gives you the, sorry, it gives you the largest records first. And then uh, it gives you, in fact, let me pull this up big. All right. So now you maybe you'll see it better. You can uh, get the largest records first. So in this case, uh, the obituary index uh, would have the largest amount, looks like 873 million names in it. So now one of the cool things about what Ancestry has done is they have proprietary indexing where they have taken OCR, that's optical character recognition, and they have managed to figure out how to pull names out of just about everything. So not only are there obituaries, their city directories, and their marriage announcements are all pulling using the same technology. So what they're doing is, let's take a marriage announcement, for example. If a marriage announcement, or in this case, an obituary, uh, it, it is in the top of this list here. If they're pulling the information about, let's say a marriage announcement, and the, you got a bride and groom, right, is kind of how the old indexing work. But the new indexing now if there's other family members listed in that marriage announcement, their technology is also pulling all of the bride's parents, the, you know, if there's other people in the bridal party, all of that's put, being pulled and delivered in their index. So uh, Ancestry, kudos to you. Their indexes are very, very powerful. There is a handout um, and I didn't really get into it at the beginning, but there is a handout for this episode um, and it has all the links that I'm talking about today plus more. So there's several pages of it here. Um, and so again, information about the uh, handouts. Well, let's jump over there real quick and give you some information. Then we'll get back to the newspapers.com uh, information. There are three ways you can get the handouts. Now, the first way is to join the channel membership here at the information access level channel membership on the YouTube channel, and then go to the community tab and you'll find the posts that have the handout links in there. All you have to do is follow the link and download the handouts. Okay, now the second way is over at Patreon. Now at Patreon, if you're at the happy dance level or higher, uh, you can get the handouts. Those come directly to you in an email every time we announce the new video that has a handout with it. You'll also get early release with that membership. All right, and then the third way is just to go over to genealogytv.org and click on the handouts tab and you can find all the handouts there for individual purchase. So uh, I hope that was helpful. The handouts really do support the channel and for that, I thank you. Okay, so back to newspapers.com. So one of the differences between newspapers.com, there's two levels of, of subscription there. This is a paid service. And so if you're on Ancestry and you have uh, one of the higher level subscriptions there, the basic 
uh, newspapers.com comes with that subscription. Um, now, it's my understanding the differences between the basic and the advanced level, I forget exactly what they call it, but the higher level of newspapers.com is the, uh, the basic is some of those older newspapers that are in public domain. So you might be able to find them, but you're not going to get the indexing that Ancestry provides. Okay, so sometimes that can be a little bit challenging. Um, but then the higher level of, of newspapers.com is, is higher because of it's not in public domain. The newspaper still owns the rights to those papers. And so Ancestry has to pay a little bit more uh, for that. And therefore, they have two different levels of subscription. So I just wanted to point that out. But newspapers.com is probably my now favorite. I, you know, we're going to talk about some others here in a moment. But um, the new OCR that they've got going on over there is just incredible. And I am now finding more stuff on newspapers.com uh, than some of the other services. But we'll talk more about that here. Now, let's jump over to Family Search for a moment. They don't really have records on, on newspapers, but they have a, a whole section on where to find newspapers. And so if you go down to search and you drop down to the to the wiki and you just search the keyword newspapers, this page comes up and there is a lot of information about what you can find in newspapers and where you can find them. So I'm just pointing that out. Okay, so over here at Google News. So if you go to uh, news.google.com forward slash newspapers, you can get an index like this and you can search around that way. I'm just pointing it out. Uh, that's a free service. Also, there is, believe it or not, a different Google News. Uh, I didn't realize there were two different services and they're probably tied together. One's an index and, and one's a little bit deeper, I guess. This is under Google Books. So it's books.google.com forward slash books forward slash newspapers. So we get in a different uh, different indexing or a different view there. Um, just pointing that out. I always use Google to search stuff. You never know what you're going to find over there. Okay. So Genealogy Bank, let me pull this up full so you can see this a little bit better because this is an important one to, to be aware of. Genealogy Bank used to be my number one go-to. It really, I, it, just because I found more stuff for my ancestors there, um, and so this I continue to pay for, um, this is a subscription. And so, uh, you can browse by the thing I like about it is you can browse by, um, by paper or by title. So if you're searching in an area, you can go and, you know, just search by, uh, let's drill in. You can go search by state. Let's pick a state. Let's go to Connecticut. You can also, uh, go in by, um, era a little bit. And so if we just pick one, it's going to take you back to a search box. So here we're going to be searching it, but you can, um, browse the, uh, the individual papers, um, here while you're at it, but they, they do have these group by, um, obituaries. They also have census records, social security, death index, etc. So they've got a lot going on, passenger lists, etc. So they've got a lot going on. I do like Genealogy Bank. Um, Genealogy Bank and I would say newspapers.com are my two favorite right now. Okay, newspaperarchives.com is another one. And I should say newspaper archive, no S. Um, and they are another one. I uh, This is a subscription service. I pay for it as needed. I don't always... Uh, have a need for it. So, you know, I just, as I'm digging around, if I find that there is a paper over here that I need, then I will pop in and pay for the subscription for another year. It comes and goes with me. I'm just saying. Internet Archive is a free source of newspapers and that is at archive.org. And this one says forward slash details forward slash newspapers to get to this page. Um, and so you can see that there's a lot. You can also filter down by year. These um, newspapers I find to be a little bit more later in time, more recent, I should say. All right, let's jump over to Europeana. I think it's called Europe, Europeana, Europeana, I guess. Um, so these are European newspapers. They are uh, free to access, which is kind of cool. And 
with that, let's jump over to Find My Past. Now, Find My Past is a subscription service. I like Find My Past. It is primarily based on, uh, for UK in Irish records. And uh, they also have a, a relationship with the uh, newspaper archives, which is this British newspaper archives. Um, so they have a relationship there. So uh, this also is a subscription service um, to be able to access those British uh, newspapers. And then we have um, MyHeritage. They have a newspaper collection. If you go to research and drop down to newspapers, um, you can search newspapers here. Um, I believe they are also subscribing to various sources similar to like Ancestry does where they have um, created different um, resources. All right, so Chronicling America is free. Your taxpayer dollars um, pay for this service. And these are a lot of newspapers around the country. A lot of them are the older newspapers. And so in the handout, I tell you exactly what eras all of these uh, subscription and or free services have available. And so at a glance, there are, you know, a dozen different places to find newspapers. Now, unfortunately, there is no one place that has all newspapers, right? It's not like you can pay one subscription and get everything. Ancestry doesn't have everything. Genealogy Bank doesn't have everything. Chronicling America doesn't have everything. All right. So I'm just letting you know, you might have to do some digging. Now, here's a trick. If you go over to uh, Family Search, and I know you can't see that very well, so let's zoom in. You can go to the wiki. Let's go to the wiki. You know, I like the wiki because this answers questions for everything. If we go to uh, North America, we drill into the United States. This time I'm going to pick Texas. And if we are on, uh, if we're looking at Texas and we come over here to newspapers on the right hand side over here and we drill in, then we can get a list of newspapers and the time frames for which they are, you know, in some cases, um, for which they have information about it. So this is just another way to kind of drill into a location. Uh, for specific newspapers or s specific areas. In fact, if you, you could even drill in, I've done this before. So let's go drill into a location in the United States. Again, we got to go all the way to the bottom. Let's pick Pennsylvania. I'm making this up as I go here. Uh, and let's just pick a county. I don't know. Let's go with Monroe County. And we drill into Monroe County and scroll down. You can get all kinds of information that's available. And in some cases, it will show you what newspapers are available for Monroe County and the time frames that they existed. Um, so, you know, just digging into the hyper local level kind of can give you some more information. So uh, with that, I hope that was helpful. Um, if that was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And you know what? Uh, if you want some more information about uh, newspapers and you want to uh, get the handout, make sure that you uh, find the handout information. And you know what? I've got a little bit more information for you right now. So let's, let's play. Hey, that. we're going to get back to that video here in just a moment. But I want to let you know that Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. All right, let's get back to it. So I would love to hear from you in the comment sections. What newspaper service do you like the most? Um, what have you been most successful finding? So let me know. I would love to hear from you. And with that, it is time to say goodbye. Uh, enjoy the rest of your genealogical journey today. And we'll catch you in other episodes that may be on the screen for you right now. All right, we'll see you next time.